You're sitting at a restaurant with your friends Alex and Sarah, having just finished a satisfying lunch. The bill arrives, and it's exactly $30. Being good friends, you decide to split it evenly, $10 each. You hand over your money, pay the server, and prepare to leave. But as you're getting ready to go, the server rushes over with an apologetic expression. There's been a mistake. The bill should have been only $25, not $30. He quickly hands a $5 refund to the busboy, asking him to return it to your table. The busboy, however, faces a mathematical dilemma. How do you divide $5 equally among three people? He can't figure out a clean way to split it, and frankly, you don't even know about the billing error in the first place. So he makes a practical decision. He pockets $2 as a tip for his trouble and gives each of you $1 back. Now, here's where things get strange. Let's trace through what happened with the money. You each originally paid $10, but got $1 back. So you each effectively paid $9 for lunch. The busboy kept $2 for himself. Total accounted for $9 plus $9 plus $9 plus $2 equals $29. But you originally paid $30. Where did that missing dollar go? The calculation seems straightforward enough. You paid $9 each, that's $27 total, plus the busboy's $2 tip, which gives us $29. Since you originally paid $30, there's clearly $1 left over, $1 missing somewhere. This reasoning feels so natural that most people immediately start hunting for the lost dollar. Did the server make another mistake? Did someone miscalculate? The arithmetic seems ironclad. $9 plus $9 plus $9 plus $2 equals $29, not $30. But here's where things get truly bizarre. Let's try the same riddle with different numbers to see what happens. Suppose you still pay a $30 bill, but this time the server realizes there's been a huge mistake. The total should have been only $10. Now the busboy gets $20 to return to you, Alex and Sarah. Again, he can't divide $20 equally among three people, and you still don't know about the exact price change. So the busboy takes his standard $2 tip, leaving him with $18 to divide. He can now refund each of you $6. Let's trace through this scenario. You each originally paid $10, but got $6 back. So you each effectively paid $4 for lunch. The busboy kept $2 for himself. Total accounted for $4 plus $4 plus $4 plus $2 equals $14. But you originally paid $30? Now $16 is missing. This is completely absurd. How can $16 simply vanish? You only paid $14 for a $30 bill? Something is clearly and catastrophically wrong with this setup. Part of what makes the missing dollar riddle so confusing is that it bombards you with numbers in a specific context. This reveals something fascinating about how our brains process mathematical information. Your abilities with numerical cognition are actually pretty remarkable. Yale cognitive scientist Karen Wynn found that infants as young as five months can understand simple arithmetic like one plus one equals two. If I give you a string of numbers like two plus five plus three plus one plus seven plus 12, you aren't confused about what's happening. You can work through it methodically to get an answer of 30. But when context is added to those numbers, it's easy to get sidetracked. We get so wrapped up in thinking about the lunch, the refund, and the busboy that we gloss over the real mathematics. We hear 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 2 equals $29, and immediately wonder where the dollar went, without stopping to question whether this is the right calculation in the first place. To resolve this paradox, we need to trace through the money flow with mathematical precision, keeping track of every dollar and where it ends up. Let's start with the original $30 that changed hands. $25 is still in the restaurant's cash register, the actual cost of the meal. $3 has been returned to you and your friends. $1 each. $2 is in the busboy's pocket. His tip. Let's verify. $25 plus $3 plus $2 equals $30. Perfect. Every dollar is accounted for. So where's the disconnect? Why does the riddle make us think there's a missing dollar? The heart of the problem. Two fatal flaws. There are really two huge problems embedded in this riddle's logic, and both represent fundamental errors in how we're thinking about the money flow. Flaw number one, the double counting problem. The first issue is subtle but crucial. It's how we think about that $3 in refunded dollars. When you originally paid $10 each, that money left your wallets and entered the restaurant system. Then, when you received $1 back each, that $3 total came back to you. So from your perspective, you effectively paid $9 each. This is your net payment after accounting for the refund. But in the faulty equation, 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 2 equals $29. We're using the 9 figure, which already has the refund subtracted from it. The $3 refund is already baked into these numbers. 
But then, to get back to our original $30, we would need to add that $3 back in. Flaw number two, the misplaced tip. The second problem is how we're incorrectly factoring in the busboy's tip. In the faulty reasoning, we add the $2 tip to what you paid, as if it's additional money that appeared from nowhere. But that's not what happened. Because the busboy took his $2 tip, that money was never returned to you, Alex or Sarah. Therefore, it must now be considered as part of the total cost of your lunch experience. This means the $2 tip is actually part of what you paid for the dining experience. You didn't pay $27 for food and then separately pay $2 for service. You paid $27 total, of which $25 went to the restaurant for food and $2 went to the busboy for service. Let's rebuild this problem from the ground up using proper accounting principles. From the restaurant's perspective, they received $25 for the meal, the correct amount. The busboy received $2 as a tip, also legitimate. Total revenue, $25 plus $2 equals $27. From the customer's perspective, you each paid $10 originally. You each got $1 back. Your effective payment, $9 each. Total paid by customers, $9 times 3 equals $27. Notice that both perspectives give us the same number, $27. This is exactly what we should expect. The amount the restaurant side received should equal the amount the customer side paid. The remaining $3 from the original $30 is sitting in your pockets. It's not missing. It's exactly where it should be. The equation, 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 2 equals $29, is simply the wrong equation. It's asking the wrong question entirely. What the riddle is actually calculating is what you effectively paid, plus money that should have been returned to you but wasn't. This is a meaningless calculation. It's like asking, what's your salary plus the money you didn't spend on groceries? The numbers might be real, but the operation doesn't represent anything coherent. The correct equation should be, what you effectively paid plus what you got back equals what you originally paid. $27 plus $3 equals $30. Or alternatively, what the restaurant kept plus what the busboy kept plus what you got back equals what you originally paid. $25 plus $2 plus $3 equals $30. This riddle demonstrates something profound about mathematical reasoning. Precision in calculation is worthless if you're solving the wrong problem. Legendary statistician John Tukey once said, An approximate answer to the right question is worth a great deal more than a precise answer to the wrong question. The missing dollar riddle is a perfect illustration of this principle. The riddle tricks us into precisely calculating the answer to a meaningless question, while the right question, where did all the money go, has a straightforward answer that requires no mystery solving at all.